Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to the Sim Hanger, the Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. Microsoft have released the PC specifications for the upcoming Microsoft Flight Simulator and they've issued them as minimum, recommended and ideal PC specs. So we'll be having a quick review of those, but we won't be dwelling too long on them as most of them are fairly self-explanatory. There are, however, a number of surprises and in addition, we'll be looking at the specs and saying how is Microsoft going to achieve the sort of thing we've seen in the media with the PC specifications that they've given. Well, let's get started. We're going to be reviewing the specifications in the format that Microsoft have provided them in. It covers AMD and NVIDIA and is split into a number of categories, a minimum spec, recommended and ideal. Microsoft Flight Simulator will require Windows 10 and it will require the update as a minimum of November 2019, 1909. In terms of CPU requirements, arguably the minimum and recommended specifications are not quite as high as perhaps many of us feared. However, for the ideal specification, you're going to need something fairly beefy like a Ryzen 7 Pro 2700X or the top-end i7-9800X. And now on to the graphics card, the area where perhaps has been the most speculation. If you've upgraded your graphics card or your PC in the last two to three years or so, then the chances are your graphics card is up to the minimum and probably the recommended spec. The GTX 770 and GTX 970, for example, are no longer sold and have been replaced. The amount of VRAM required for the recommended spec at 4GB is lower than I anticipated. I'm going to hazard a guess, at minimum spec it's 1080p, at recommended 2K, and the ideal spec is 4K. Many flight simmers are still using the GTX 1080 Ti, and looking at this it would put you firmly between recommended and ideal specs. Most PCs these days come with 16GB of RAM, so for some it may mean an upgrade to get to the ideal specification. The flight sim is clearly memory intensive, so memory speed will also be an important factor. Across all specifications, 150 gigabytes of hard drive space is required. And for optimal performance, well, that should be an SSD or an alternative non-volatile memory device. And lastly, what bandwidth are you going to require for your internet for download? You're going to need 5 megabits per second for minimum, 20 for recommended, and at the top end, 50 megabits per second. For some, they will have access to these speeds already or be able to upgrade to the required speeds to give them the performance that they want in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For others, however, this will be the area perhaps of the most disappointment as their internet infrastructure is not able to support and supply these sort of speeds. And I'm reminded of a gentleman in Melbourne, Australia, who commented on a previous video of mine when we were looking at the specifications, saying that for him his internet speeds were poor and it would be like playing flight sim in Minecraft. For those that fall into this category, unfortunately, they're going to have to just download the area that they're flying in and, in effect, cache the information on their system. This will bring some limitations to what can be achieved with the simulator. We've seen feedback from time to time from various alpha testers indicating that we would be surprised at the performance level in relation to the PC specifications. And to a large degree, well, I think that is the case. Talking English pounds, because I'm not familiar with the pricing elsewhere in the world, but looking at the minimum spec, you're looking at between five and eight hundred pounds. The recommended would probably set you back anything between twelve hundred and fifteen hundred pounds. And the ideal specification, well, the prices are probably going to start around about the two thousand three hundred, two thousand five hundred pounds 
and head upwards. These prices are indicative and ballpark only. Upgrading selected components, of course, is always an option. Microsoft have put out a fair amount of media already on Microsoft Flight Simulator and the graphics and detail is at a level that quite frankly we haven't seen and bear in mind that what we're looking at is default. In the default mode no other flight simulator even comes close. But then we turn our attention back to the minimum and recommended specifications for hardware. And let's face it, let's chuck in FSX and throw in a bit of Orbix scenery with that level of specification at minimum level as recommended. Well, we're not going to get an absolutely smooth performance. So this pops the question and it's the obvious question. Are these specifications realistic in terms of what performance we can expect? My CPU is an i7 8700K. I've got 32 gigs of memory and a RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. And in both X-Plane and Prepared, when I turn up my settings, not all the way to max, but fairly high, well, I'm not always getting a smooth performance. So how is Microsoft going to deliver this level of performance with that level of PC when no other flight simulator can? I believe that the answer lies in the technology being used. Bear in mind that Asobo have got the might and technical know-how of Microsoft behind them. They are not restricted to what is fundamentally off-the-shelf utilities and programs and have developed what is to all intents and purpose a game engine that is bespoke specifically for flight simulation with two key advantages over most other sims. The first is that it's able to use multiple cores effectively in the CPU. As both prepared and x users will know that it does not take advantage of the multiple cores within a CPU. It'll use two to three at best and any more cores than that will give a marginal improvement. We've seen some technological gains recently in Vulkan coming to X-Plane and DX12 coming into Prepared. But these are graphic APIs and have a very limited impact, if any, on CPU core utilization. And I believe the second element is that they're able to take full advantage of VRAM on the GPU. Microsoft Flight Simulator is being developed on the DX11 platform, but there are plans to upgrade it in the future to DX12. But this DirectX technology is owned by, yeah, you guessed it, Microsoft. So I'm guessing if anybody's able to optimize it, well, it'll be a Sobo with Microsoft's assistance. So in summary, there can be an expectation that an acceptable level of performance can be achieved with the specifications given. And then combined with the Azure AI technology, the opportunity for Microsoft Flight Simulator to move flight simulation to a whole new level remains a possibility. Well, things are certainly hotting up in the flight sim world. I hope you found this useful and informative. Thank you very, very much for joining me. I hope to see you all again very soon and bye for now.